peeps, welcome to another video or to the uh, McCall's 6696 shirt dress sew along series. Now that's a mouthful. This is going to be a five part series and I will also put all the links for the other parts in the description dark bar down below. I decided to do a sew along for the ever popular McCall's 6696 shirt dress uh, that's taken the blogosphere and vlogosphere and its general sewing community by storm over the last couple of years. I've made about five of these now and I can definitely see a few more in my future. I really enjoy sewing this dress. Um, I find I enjoy all the processes that are involved. I have tweaked things slightly and I know a lot of other people have tweaked little bits and pieces to suit them and that's the beauty of sewing is that you can make it exactly what you want it to be. Now all the tips and tricks that I've included in here are different things that I've found from different sources all over the, um, the web so I'm going to list all of them in the description bar down below. Part one is going to be selecting your size, burritoing the yoke and French seams. So let's get started. So with this pattern you get a choice of cup sizes and you need to measure your bust and your high bust um, which is a uh, diagram for there. Um, and Nia's is working out that she needs the uh, D cup so that's what I'm going to choose. And then over here um, it gives you all the different pieces and then so you've got the bodice front so I need to do um, piece three to get that and then I've marked out the rest of the pieces that I want and so I'm going to trace those all off. Right so the other thing you want to think about as well when you're um, coming to trace out your patterns and believe me you want to trace them I know it's a load of extra work but if you change sizes um, and you cut out the smaller size and you need to make a bigger one you will curse yourself if the pattern is out of print or if um, it, you know it would cost you eight nine up to 15 quid so yeah trace your patterns um, these are the um, finished garment measurements that are actually printed on the tissue paper I'm actually going to do the size 18 um, because that's four inches of ease and it is a shirt dress they are meant to be um they're not meant to be skin tight fitting so yeah that's the one i'm going to go for and then i've also got the waistband pieces underneath here and um, so they don't have the finished measurements on them but i've measured it and i'm actually for this one i'm going to do the size 16. so it's going to be 18 at the bust graded down to a 16 at the waist and then the hips i will just do from a 16 because again we're going for this version so the only thing I have to do for Nia for this one is to actually lengthen it and I've got to lengthen it but quite a large amount. Adult Tetrising at its best. Uh, out of four meters of fabric I could fit everything on but um, I want to do the it's the back panel that I haven't been able to put on the fold because there isn't enough because of the width that, the length that I added to the skirt so I do have some more of this fabric so I'm just going to cut the back panel out of that but everything else is on so this is cool okay so I've cut out all of my pieces and I'm now just transferring the markings over and I'm doing that with um, my friction pen so uh, this is where the back needs to be gathered the side notches armhole notches and then there's a gathering point on the back as well I'm going to mark all the pieces um, for the bodice and get that hopefully done today um, so yeah, that's pretty much the next step. Right, so according to the sewing instructions, the first thing that they want to do, you to do is interface all the interface pieces. Um, well, given that I don't need any of those yet, and I've just done all the cutting out, I am going to do that later. So the next one is to stitch all the bodice uh, darts, which I have marked with my friction pen. So I'm going to pin all those together and stitch those up. So everything's pinned up and I will now sew the darts. Okay, so I've sewn all of the darts and I've just gone off of the end um, because you don't want to back stitch here because you end up with um, a very pointy bit so you actually want to take the threads and knot them I do it three times And then trim trim that off so you want to do that for all of the darts okay so once you've sewn your darts you want you to press the bust darts down and the um, center or the waist darts uh, towards the center um, I tend to leave this and then kind of wait till I've sewn a whole bunch of um, seams together and then go and press 
Okay, so step number three is to um, gather the um, upper and lower edges of the bodice. Now I did this with the first one I, I made and I didn't like how it looked, so I actually add in black paint, which um, means that you can skip this step and move on to this step. So, so with the amount of fabric I had, um, I had to cut out the yoke pieces out of the bottom kind of bordery print area and this one is going to be the one that's on show and this is going to be the one that goes on the inside. So you want the one that's going to be on show first. So I'll put that to the side. So you want to match up your markings so this is where the gathers are meant to start and then that's where the gathers are meant to start on the yoke piece uh, sorry on the back piece this is the yoke piece so match up those ones on both sides so hit that mark and gone through that one so I'm going to pin both of these long pieces down okay so that's all pinned in place and so here we've got what should have been gathered up so what we want to do is turn that into a pleat right so I have pinned um, together the outer yoke the back panel and the inner yoke and I have sewn them up until the gather points. I've then marked the centre point on the outer yoke and I've marked the centre point on the back panel which I am going to pin together and it's really weird trying to do this looking through the camera rather than the actual <laughs> looking at what I'm doing. Okay, so you end up, what you want to do is kind of smooth this fabric down. And form a pleat. So you want it to be smooth, you want it to be So the, that inner fold there is hitting the centre point and then pin that down. And then you want to do the same for the other side. So. So that's kind of that's that's the way that you want your fabric to go so that the pleat is going to be on the outside and then you want to smooth this over till it hits that center point Can you see in there they're meeting those two those two bits of fabric are meeting and then that's just formed a pleat so again Pin that one down. And then so another pin just in case. And then I'll, I'll sew that and complete that line of stitching. Okay, so we have the inner yoke, we have the back piece, and then if you flip it over, we've got the outer yoke as well. So right sides together for the outer pieces. I've just lost a pin in there somewhere as well. There it is. Right sides together for the um, outer, back, outer yoke and the back piece and then right side to wrong side for the inner yoke to the inner, uh, the, the inner side of the back, uh, the back piece. Okay so I've sewn that at 5 eighths of an inch so that when you turn that over you have a um, box pleat on the back panel and that is going to be obviously the top of the yoke. So I'm actually going to go and press this up now and I'm going to press the other one up and then I'm going to top stitch it down. Um, the pattern doesn't call for that but um, given that I'm going to be doing top stitching wherever it's asked me to slip stitch because I just prefer that look on shirt dresses and it also saves a whole bunch of hand sewing. I'm going to be con uh, um, 
use the same top stitching throughout so yeah I'm gonna press this and then I'll be back so I've pressed the yoke up I've also just pressed the darts because I was over there and doing that at the same time so they're all done and I am now going to top stitch uh, this bit down so for top stitching I use, like to use my blind hem foot um, because it has this guide that I can run in the um, seam that um, I then will be able to stitch next to and that way I have consistent top stitching. Um, my machine allows me to move my needle over a variety of positions but I always move it right over to the edge because that gives you a decent amount from that um, edge and it just means that you don't have to remember if you like one or two or three ticks over you're right over so that you can be consistent throughout the garment. So yeah, uh, top stitch that down, you see it's the same on the inside and because um, I use that foot it doesn't look too wiggly, so I'm happy with that. Okay, so we've already done steps four and five and obviously done them in a different manner. Um, now we're going to attach the front bodice pieces to the yoke and again we're going to do this in a completely different manner to the pattern. So you want to lay your back bodice piece down with the inner facing or the facing of the yoke um, out of the way and then you want to take your front bodice pieces and line those up at the shoulder pin them down and sew them okay so I've pinned the shoulders of the front bodice pieces to the back yoke the outer yoke and so I'm going to sew both of those down Okay, so we've got the two front pieces attached to the uh, yoke and then you've got the yoke facing still floating free. So this is where the magic happens. Now, the pattern wants you to slip stitch, to um, press the seam allowance under and slip stitch it on the inside at the um, shoulder seams. But we are going to use the burrito method, um, which were, I got from Grainline and um, for their archer shirt and there is a video for that and this will work for any shirt that has a yoke so you can use it on the shirt dresses you can use it on shirts yeah anything that has a, has a yoke like this so i've got the um work facing me with the front panels then the back panel and then the uh the the yoke facing is on the inside and what you want to do is actually roll this all up into a burrito which is where the name comes from. So, this is all the bodice panels. This is the inner yoke facing, and these are the shoulder seams that we've just done. So you've rolled all that up into a burrito, and you can guess what we're gonna do now. You pin together the yoke facing to the shoulder seam that you have just sewn. So that, and you wanna keep all this free so that you've got that tool tucked inside. So you're gonna pin that all down and then you're gonna sew it. So there we go, that one's all pinned and the bodice piece is all completely free and not caught up in this line of pinning that we've just done. So I'm gonna do the other one. And you've got the notches here that you can match up So there you have your shirt dress yoke burrito um, and again all the work is free of these pin lines it's not not caught in there at all and you're just going to sew and you're going to use the st stitching line that you've just done as your guide so you sew from this side with this this side up and just sew at the usual 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance Okay, so there is the finished burrito. So you have um, your yolks sewn at the shoulder seams and then everything is on the inside. So what you do, you reach through and pull it through. You obviously want to be quite gentle around the neckline because you don't want to stretch that out. So that way, you have closed up 
your shoulder seams on your yoke without having to do any hand stitching. I mean, obviously if you like hand stitching, then go at it, but um, I just love the way that this turns out. It's really clean. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna um, press these shoulder seams and then I'm gonna top stitch them the same way that I did here. Okay, so the next step in the pattern is to stitch the bodice back to the bodice front at the sides, the side seams. Um, so I'm going to French seam these because uh, there's no lining on this dress. So I want the edges on the inside to be as beautiful and clean finished as possible. So French seams all the way. So French seams always feel a little bit weird the first time you do them because rather than sticking right sides of the fabrics together or pinning right sides of the fabrics together, you're pinning the wrong sides of the fabrics together. So you have um, notches on these side panels so you want to match those up and pin all along. So pinned all along there. Do the same on the other side. So the first line of stitching that you want to do is um, a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the fabric and you want to do that on both sides. Okay, so you've sewn the wrong sides together along your seam allowance at a quarter of an inch. What you want to do now is trim that down to half of this so you've got one eighth of an inch left. Okay, so now that you've trimmed your seam allowances down, what you want to go and do is you want to press this um, down to set the stitches and then you want to turn it inside out and um, press uh, the uh, seam press the seam open, press the seam closed. You want to turn it inside out and press the seam like that. <laughs> okay, so I have pressed um, this seam allowance um, closed like that and so it's all nice and flat. You can pin this, I don't tend to, but you now want to sew for the rest of your seam allowance which is 3 eighths of an inch, although because a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and you're never going to get it perfect because of the turn, turn in the cloth as well, so you want to kind of just aim just under 3 eighths of an inch. Okay, so I've sewn the second part of the seam down at 3 eighths of an inch and I am now going to um, press that open with the, I'm going to press the seam towards the back of the dress. Okay, so we have a um, bodice that is together at the side seams, the shoulder seams, the yoke's in place, um, the pleat is in place instead of the gathers. Um, so yeah, just now the next step will be to attach the sleeves and attach the waistband and I will be doing that tomorrow. So I hope you found that useful. If you have any questions at all, please let me know in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and I'll see you again really soon. Bye!